The car is officially packed to the brim. I can't fit anything else in here. I look like a crazy hoarder right now. off today's episode in North Bend, Oregon. We are just a little bit north of Coos Bay, which is where we are headed next, but I will show you why we had to stop in North Bend first. <laughs> This is the third piece of the Japanese stoneware with the horizon pattern that I have found so far on this Oregon coast trip. This is a salt and pepper shaker. Unfortunately, there's just one. I keep hoping I'm gonna find the second one, but I don't. And it's only 99 cents, which is a great deal for this. Neutral pottery is one of my favorite things to pick up because I feel like it works with so many different kinds of styles. I also really love the 70s speckled drippy glaze. This one's only a buck, so I'm gonna grab that one for sure. This onyx bowl is so gorgeous. I love onyx. There's something so special about the beautiful translucent color. And this honey buttery color is gorgeous. It's only $4.99. This would be great to put salt in if you were having a dinner party and you could put it out on the table. I'm pretty sure that these salt and pepper shakers are Polish pottery. I know that typically it's a beautiful hand painted blue on most of the Polish pieces I pick up. I am loving the color and simplicity on this handmade teapot. It does have the artist signature there. It was made in 1998. I really like the handle and it's only $3.99. So far, the pricing in this Goodwill is even lower than back home. These look like authentic Dorothy Thorpe cups. Oh my gosh. And they are only $1.99. It looks like there's quite a few of them and the silver is in great condition. These little balloon dog reproductions are so adorable. I know the original designer pieces can be very valuable. I typically look at the bottom just to check for a signature, but so far they've always been a copy. These are Art Deco bookends. They've got 1999 on them, which actually is not a bad deal. Something like this would probably sell for around 150, but it does have a huge chip on the backside of one. So I'm not gonna grab them, but they are really beautiful. You know I love my hand-painted Mexican pottery. I really like this one because it has a bird on it. It's $4.99, and I think that this will be great to add to my Little Italy space. I wish that this had the bowls that went with it. It's got a beautiful little mid-century teak handle. It's only $3.99, but I couldn't find the bowls in the pottery section. I 
I'm really drawn to this piece because it reminds me of seashells. It's $4.99 and it's got the artist signature mile six on the back. It's from the 80s. I love the colors on it. I think I'm gonna grab it. I have no room in the car for these, but the coloring on them is so great. This is the exact 1970s color palette that we're gonna be working with in our downstairs basement and especially in the bar area. And I am looking for two bar stools, but I think I need something that's gonna be taller. It needs to be the bar height. I hope someone that lives in Coos Bay comes and grabs these beauties because they are only $20 each. I'm pretty surprised by all the mid-century furniture here. Up in Portland, this stuff is hard to find. You know I am all about that shape, and this lamp is fabulous. It is only $14.99. I'm gonna find a way to get that in the car because there's no way I'm walking away without it. Whoa, that was a big crow that just flew by. Wow, it was like right by the window. That was cool. I wish you guys could have seen that. <laughs> The car just keeps filling up. I now have the front seat almost full over here. So we are gonna go hit Coos Bay and I'm gonna try to only find some smalls and jewelry because I basically have enough room for maybe one more small box of stuff. The rest of the back is completely packed. I have strategically placed everything so all of the pottery is safe. All of the artwork is stacked up nice and safe. It definitely takes a skill set to pack a car this size with all of these treasures, but it's so worth it. So let's head to Coos Bay and see what we can find there. That's small. <laughs> Coos Bay is one of the larger beach towns in Southern Oregon. It's got this beautiful old historic downtown area. And I think I have to come back because look at what they have. Little Italy restaurant, they were sadly closed. So I'm gonna have to come back for dinner here next time. The downtown area is filled with lots of little shops and great restaurants to eat at. They even have this beautiful old historic movie theater. I think I should have planned an extra day because this is my first time stopping in Coos Bay and it's bigger than I thought it was. So it looks like there's two different stores. There's this Vintage 101, which we're gonna hit first. And then across the street behind that truck, there is a store that says Old World Antiques. And it does look like the sign is on and they are open. So we will visit both of them. Is another one of these brass shelving units that I am obsessed with and hoping to find for a great deal. After I posted the last video where I mentioned one of these, quite a few people commented that even though these are attributed to Milo Bauman, they are not. And I never want to add to misinformation, so let me know if you think this is a Milo Bauman or not. I thought that this was such a special piece. You can see right here that someone has little labels on it. This tree is from 1755. As it gets further out with the rings, they have these little labels on here that show what year it would have been and what was going on in our country during that time. Over here, it's 1930, the Great Depression begins. It should absolutely stay exactly how it is and be a feature on a wall. Isn't nature cool? Gorgeous handwoven bag. This one's got really fun handles on it and it's only $14.95. This is gonna be a perfect summer bag to add to my shop sale. These little mice are so cute. I've seen these before on Instagram, but I've never found them, especially in the original box. Look at how adorable they are. They're $14 for the whole set. I don't know if I'm gonna keep these or sell them yet, but I'm definitely getting them.
This is the second wood block print I found on this beach trip. And this one's got a really fun, unique design on it. And it looks like it was originally only 79 cents. These are faux wood, they are not real teak, but this is exactly what I'm on the hunt for. I'm looking to switch out my current silverware set and it's so hard to find a full set. This one's only $39, it's got 13 pieces, but they're not teak handles. Oh, but these are teak, these are perfect. Danish teak salt and pepper shakers and it's only $10 for the pair, great price. This lighting fixture almost looks like a squid or an octopus. They've got some really good mid-century lighting here. I am always hunting for really great original portrait paintings. This one is $65 and she's really beautiful. I love the colors on it. I'm a little bit on the fence. I think I'm gonna pass on her. I love finding a new designer to be on the lookout for. I have never seen one of these woolly mammoths and now I am on the hunt. Look at how fabulous that piece is. I'm putting it out there, I'm gonna find one. I have been stockpiling a bunch of handbags and a lot of really good fall and winter clothing. And I think I'm gonna save it all for maybe a October sale. So keep an eye out for my October 1st Friday sale because I think I might do a big clothing drop. Antique Mall, as it turns out, is a pretty high-end store. And I got a tip from the girl inside Vintage 101 that I might really like this place and it is called Leaf's Treehouse, and she said it's about three times the size of their store, so kind of excited. The fancy antique store even has a fancy puppy. Oh my gosh, so cute. Reminds me of the lady in the tramp dog. This little reindeer looks so much like the one that I just got the other day at Goodwill. This vest right here is great. It's $30, which doesn't give me margins for resale, but if you're local, come and get it because that's a good price. This is just like the spun fiberglass planter that I have. And what's interesting is they actually put a piece of wood on top and kind of shabby chic it up. Personally, I like them better with a plant in them. These long and skinny little paintings are so hard to find. It's something that I always grab when I come across them because they look great in a gallery wall. Look at how long and skinny this painting is. And it's only $7.50. Okay, I cannot decide if I love this piece or if I hate it. I think it would be so fun to have for a barbecue or a picnic outside and you can have your punch or even an alcoholic beverage in this, but I can't decide if I think it's just awesome. I always think having a statement piece that no one else has is the way to go and I love Rams, but I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Please let me know in the comments if I'm crazy. Is this thing awesome or what?
My husband's favorite art piece is the Great Wave, and I love it too. This one looks like it might be some kind of a sheet or just a printed wall hanging. I don't think this is vintage, but since my husband doesn't watch most of my videos, I can tell you guys, I'm thinking about possibly hiring someone to come out and paint a mural in our house of this scene. I think it would be so unique and I know he would love it. I spotted this little Batosi style Greek horse and it says 450 gold horse. I don't see any signature on it. Um, I'm assuming it's $4.50, not $450. The pricing on the other pieces here is around that. So I'm gonna take it up to the front counter and check. I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be $4.50. All the pricing is very reasonable in this space. So that little baby is coming home with me. The girl at Vintage 101 was correct. This place is huge. There's an entire upstairs area with dozens of vendors and the pricing at this shop is really reasonable. Coos Bay is definitely being added to my regular stops from here on out. I always want the things that are not for sale. Story of my life. Look at the beautiful Moroccan shape on this. Oh, I love it so much. We are going for super cozy and casual 70s lounge vibes in our downstairs basement. And my husband has actually been picking up some of these vintage Afghan blankets. I have not seen the pillows and these are in really good condition. They're only $10 each and I'm kind of on the fence because I don't want to overdo it. And I feel like with the throws and pillows, that would be too much. I'm going to leave them for someone else, but they are in really good condition. I found an amazing set of vintage glasses in the Florence episode. So I'm not going to grab these, but I wanted to show you these because this is one of my favorite sets. I actually have eight of these frosted glasses that are just slightly different, but this is so beautiful when you put your summer punch in it. You just have to be really careful when you hand wash them. Oh, here's the exact ones that I had. They're just a little bit smaller. Too funny. Whether we like it or not, the 1980s are coming back in style. Actually, I think they've been in style for a little while here. I think that this piece is kind of fun. It's got some uniqueness to it and it's only $25. So I'm gonna grab this and that can go in my fall collection. These vintage hand-woven textiles make beautiful table runners. I really like to layer them and stack them on top of each other, kind of the way that they have these two. And $8 is a really good price, so I'm definitely gonna grab this one.
Well, Coos Bay has provided for me today. This is a town that I'm gonna be coming back to regularly. I actually really wanna come here with my husband. He joined me for the beginning of the trip in Astoria, and then he headed home because, you know, those darn nine to five Monday through Friday jobs. I think that this is a town he would really enjoy. So we're gonna be coming back here and get clam chowder out on the boardwalk. first fell in love with the Oregon coast town, Bandon, Oregon, last summer when Jesse and I were on a road trip. We had planned to stay at a hotel in Coos Bay, and as we were getting ready to book it, it turns out they had no rooms available. So we decided to just drive a little bit further, and there was a location called the Bandon Inn that had one room for the night. So we booked that room not knowing anything about the beach town Bandon. And guess what? As always with life, sometimes when something goes wrong, it's actually going right. And the coolest part about the Bandon Inn is the rooms overlook the old downtown area. So we were able to map out where we wanted to walk around just by looking at it from above. So I've only eaten at one restaurant here in Bandon before and I'm going to the exact same one because that's how good it is. The best calamari I've ever had in the United States. Are you guys ready for story time? I have to tell you the story of what happened in Bandon, Oregon when I tried to go get that amazing calamari at my favorite restaurant. This is gonna be a story about calamari, about disappointment, and about new friends. And I just really wanted to tell you guys this story, even though it's a little bit silly to be talking about not getting the calamari I wanted. But I also think that there's such a moral of the story here, so I wanted to share this with you guys. As I was picking my way to Bandon, Oregon, I knew I was about to have the most incredible dinner because my husband and I had stopped there on our way to the Redwoods last summer. And I was so excited for their calamari because it was incredible. Unfortunately, I didn't make reservations and they were completely booked for the rest of the night. So I got turned away and I was walking away like a sad little puppy and I kind of started getting a little grumpy. I was a little hangry and I was like, oh man. So as I'm walking down the boardwalk, I kind of had this moment where I was like, knock it off. Like, you're not going to be mad right now because you're not getting the calamari you wanted. And then this exact thought hit me. You don't know what the universe has in store for you tonight. So I made my peace with it and I accepted I was just going to get fish and chips at one of the smaller restaurants. And I started walking around the downtown area just looking for somewhere to pop in. And then I spotted a gentleman outside of a restaurant and he had a beautiful German Shepherd dog. And I love German Shepherds, so I had to stop with him and chat about his beautiful dog. And I decided why not ask a local where else I should eat. And as we were talking about options of where I could eat, a beautiful redheaded lady popped around the fence and said, hey, who's this? and I immediately knew I was gonna love her. He tells her that I'm looking for somewhere to eat and she says, come on in, I got an extra steak on the grill. Close your eyes Get some rest I'm by your side <laughs> You're the cutest I've ever seen. Oh. I ended up having one of the most magical evenings of my life. It was the perfect ending to this trip, and it just was a reminder of this lesson. And I've learned it over and over again, and I keep having to relearn it. But it's that when one door closes, another one opens. And I know this last year and a half has been really hard for all of us. And I just keep reminding myself that sometimes change happens and sometimes it's unexpected. 
and you never know what's around the corner. So every single day in every single situation, we all get to choose our attitude towards life. And I recognize that this is a story about being hangry and calamari, but it truly was a beautiful evening. They had three different dogs there. We were eating home cooked food around a beautiful fire pit table. I was there for three hours and we swapped life stories. We talked about our past travels. It was such an interesting group of people coming together to share our stories. And as Red told me that night, it was kismet. I was meant to find that place. And it's just a beautiful way to remind ourselves that you never know what's gonna happen. The moral of the story, my friends, is keep your hearts open. And sometimes when that door gets closed in your face, it just means something even more magical is just around the corner. Just about 20 minutes north of the California border is one of my favorite places on the entire Oregon coast, the Natural Bridges. Now this place is unbelievable. You can pull up to a lookout, get out of your car, hike down just a little ways, just a couple minutes and have a beautiful view. But if you're really brave and you've got good hiking shoes on, I promise you it is so worth the hike down to get up close and personal. There is nothing more beautiful than this site right here. And I'm so glad that Jesse and I braved it and took the chance to get down there and see it with our own eyes. But the fun and the thrifting and the adventures do not have to stop as soon as you cross the California border. Once you get to Crescent City and the Redwoods, there's more thrifting, more great restaurants, and the most incredible thing of all, the Redwood Forest. When you first get into town, look through the fields and keep an eye out for herds of elk. The last two times that I have done road trips down to the Redwoods, we have seen dozens of beautiful elk in the fields, just resting, having a great day. One of my personal favorite mini hikes is the Lady Bird Johnson Grove. I could spend all day walking around and just staring up at the sky and the beautiful trees. This has to be one of the most beautiful drives in our entire country. And I feel like everyone needs to make a trip to the Redwoods in their lifetime. It really is something special. I have so many wonderful memories from my childhood, coming here on road trips, seeing Babe and Paul Bunyan, and going to the Trees of Mystery. And one of the most important reasons to come here would be the incredible museum. They have some of the most extensive collections of Native American art and history that I have ever seen. I could spend hours here. There is so much to learn. And they not only have Pacific Northwest Native American pieces, but they have stuff from all across the country. You know how I'm always saying that if you want to learn more about true authentic vintage, the place to go would be antique stores. And if you are looking to learn about Native American baskets and beadwork and history, I really think these museums have such beautiful collections and so much historical information. Looking at stuff online just does not compare to seeing this art in person. And when you get outside, you can let your inner child come out and you can climb on the beautiful bridges amongst the redwood trees. 
I am not gonna lie, if you are afraid of heights, this is probably not the activity for you, but if you want some adventure, it is such a fun place to go. And you must take the gondola. It takes you all the way up the hill, so high in the sky, and drops you off with the most incredible view of the Redwood Forest. And if you're feeling extra adventurous, you don't have to take the gondola on the way down. They have several different hiking trail options depending on your skill level. I highly recommend grabbing one of those walking sticks at the beginning, because you're gonna need it. There was no way that I could wrap up my Oregon Coast tour without including a little bit of California because the Redwoods really are a magical place. And I'm gonna be sharing a little bit of a love story about how my husband and I met and how we fell in love in the Redwoods. I'll share that in the next episode with you guys. Filming this Oregon coast trip for you guys has really awoken my passion for travel, my passion for nature, and my passion for videography. I really hope you guys have enjoyed the way that I put these videos together because I would love to do more of these travel-based thrifting vlogs for you. So please let me know if you had fun on this journey, if you feel like I showed you guys a glimpse of what the Oregon coast looks like, and if you guys want me to do more of these travel-based vlogs style videos. I sure hope the answer is yes. Please let me know in the comments below because I'm hoping to hit the road and film a lot more of these adventures for you guys. And most importantly, I hope I have inspired you to come and visit Oregon. I live in one of the most beautiful places in the world and I'm so thrilled to have shared it with you. I have so many exciting things on the horizon to share with you guys. I've got a road trip to Montana, a road trip to Central Oregon. I might be headed to the South. I might be headed to the Midwest. There's gonna be a lot of new content coming your way. We are also getting started moving into our new house and I'm gonna be sharing that with all of you guys here soon. So it's gonna be a wild year and I can't wait to take you guys on the journey with me. The car is officially packed to the brim. I can't fit anything else in here. I look like a crazy hoarder right now. Every time I pull up somewhere, I feel like everyone's looking over at my car like, what is that girl doing? <laughs> but I miss my boys so much and it is time to hit the road and head home. Thank you so much for joining me on this fun adventure. This is something I've been dreaming about doing for years and obviously it went really well. So I think I'm gonna be doing this every year and taking you guys with me. Maybe someday I'll actually get to do this with some of you guys. I think that would be really, really fun. So thank you for joining me on this adventure and I hope you guys had fun. I will see you back in Portland where I'm going to unload all of my treasures and I'm gonna follow up with this episode doing some kind of a design episode and a mini haul at the house so you can see the pieces up close and personal. And I can tell you a little bit more about what I have found out about the different pieces. So thank you so much again. I know I keep saying thank you, but I mean it. I appreciate you guys and I will see you guys in the next adventure. Thank you.